Um, let's continue talking about Hamilton circuits. That's what we were doing last time. How to find Hamilton circuits without just making it up, without uh, just guessing it. Um, I had two basic bits of strategy from last time, and I thought we would just, I would just kind of summarize again, and then I just want to do a bunch more examples. I have a couple to try, and then I have some for you to check out. Uh, so, these are strategies for building Hamilton circuits without guessing. And uh, like I said last time, there is no sort of um, simple theorem that just tells you uh, if there is or is not a Hamilton circuit. And there's no simple procedure by which you can create a Hamilton circuit. Uh, and so instead, we have just sort of um, less formal strategies, which unfortunately makes this um, I would say quite a bit harder than drawing Euler circuits and Euler paths. Uh, drawing a Hamilton circuit involves looking very closely at the graph and um, it's kind of like a little puzzle that you have to solve to decide where the edges should go and where the edges should not go. Uh, there are We talked about two basic strategies though and um, the first one is two chosen edges meet at every vertex and in particular no three-way right remember the way that a Hamilton circuit looks um, I should have I probably should have can, can I just postpone this I should have just drawn another example you know a typical example of a Hamilton circuit looks something like here's an example we did last time and what is the Hamilton circuit? It goes uh, and it meets every vertex once without repeating any vertices. And you can draw this just by choosing particular edges. I would choose these two. One strategy we talked about last time is if there are any degree two vertices, you must choose both of those edges. Um, and then you must uh, exclude any edges which already are at these um, uh, places where two of them meet. For instance, right here, there are now two edges chosen through here, which means we cannot also use the third one because we are not allowed to have a three-way intersection in a Hamilton circuit. That means this is disallowed. This is also disallowed. And you can kind of work things out um, to eventually finish. In this example, you have to do it like that. Right? But anyway, that's what a typical Hamilton circuit looks like. And the basic facts about this is that two chosen edges, I mean the red ones, two chosen edges meet each vertex. That is to say there's no three-way intersections. And also, there are no sub-circuits. This is what we talked about at the end last time. That is this whole thing makes one big circuit and inside of that there are no smaller circuits made by a little part of it. That is also not allowed in one of these uh, Hamilton circuits. All right. These are the basic, the two basic facts that lead to our general strategies for creating the Hamilton circuits. Now uh, I was going to, so I'm going to be a little more specific about these, trying to help out. These are somewhat vague. Uh, I mean, they're specific as written there, but they don't immediately indicate like strategies. So the first one, that two chosen edges meet at every vertex, what that means is if you see any vertex which has degree two, then that means you should actually use both of those two edges. Make them red or scribble them in if you like, uh, if you don't have a, another color. All right? If you see something with uh, degree two, you must use both of those edges. All right? If you see something like this is the 
no three-way intersection rule. If you see three meeting like this, or maybe I'll draw it, I mean, you can draw it however you like, I suppose. But if you see something like this and this are already chosen, then you must exclude the other option. Right? Because you're not allowed to have a three-way intersection. So if you ever see two things intersecting, which is good, but then there's like other options, other edges, you can't use those other edges because you're not allowed to make a three-way intersection. All right? Uh, or sometimes you see situations like <coughs> something like maybe I have a three-way intersection and um, Sorry, this is not what I meant. Maybe I have a four-way intersection, say, and I've already excluded two of them. Well, now there's only two remaining legal choices, and so I must use those two choices. These are all variations on the same general principle, which is to say there can only be two meeting at each vertex, all right? So when it comes to actually doing specific examples, if I give you a big graph and say draw, draw in the uh, Hamilton circuit, it involves looking at each of the vertices for patterns like this. If you have only two legal options, you have to use both of those two options. This is actually the same situation here. You also only have two legal, two, two legal options and you must use those two. If you have already two chosen, then you should exclude the other edge there. All right. This is very specifically kind of what you're looking for in a graph um, when you are applying this general strategy that two chosen edges meet at every vertex. All right. This is the uh, no three-way rule, right? You can't have three of these red edges meeting at the same one. And then what about the sub-circuits thing? This is, the, this is really the, the most... Um, common sort of thing that we're going to use these these rules here but this, the the subcircuits thing is kind of a I would say comes up less often but it's also useful so no subcircuits what that means is something like if you see now this is a bit more complicated but if you see something like um, something like this, and you have already used those two. What does the no subcircuits rule mean? It means you cannot also use that one because that would make a smaller circuit within the larger graph. So if you see this, then I'm gonna draw that same little thing again. This should be X'd out because using that edge would have made a sub-circuit and that's not allowed, all right? So these are general principles. There's kind of a lot uh, here, but I mean, they all are basic <coughs> variations on the same ideas. And that is that you can only have two uh, chosen edges meeting at each vertex and also no sub-circuits are allowed, all right? So if you don't, if you're like trying to do one of these, I would I would suggest you know to build a Hamilton circuit to build a ham. I would just say check each vertex for these kinds of patterns. For these patterns, and either include or exclude uh, edges as appropriate. All right, and you should start, how do you get started? You usually get started by looking for degree two vertices. So start with degree two verts, <coughs> all right? So I have a couple examples, and then I have a bunch for you all to try, and then that'll probably do it for, for this, uh, this little bit. So let's try 
this is just a sort of tic-tac-toe kind of a situation here. Uh, but I'm going to insert some extra vertices in the middle of some of the lines. All right. So let's try this as my graph to start with. Okay, so we should, it still says it on the top there, start with the degree two vertices. So we should try to locate any vertices which have degree two. Uh, in this example, they are in the corners here, right? Two, this is a two, this is a two, this is a two here. All right, and then also those kind of extra vertices in the middle of those lines, those are also degree twos. So I'm gonna put that's a two, that's a two, that's a two. All right, and then the rest are threes and fours. All the other vertices have degree three or four, uh, which are not going to be helpful at this point. Yeah? Scoot it up. Come on, I'm scooting. To build a ham is what it says. Yeah, check each vertex for one of these patterns and either include or exclude edges as appropriate. And we're gonna start with the degree twos, which are there. And this is like the very first of these little patterns that I wrote right here. If you see a degree two, you have to just use both of those edges. Uh, I'm gonna do mine in red, but even if you, you know, if you don't have the colors, you can just kind of do this kind of scribbly thing. It's very clear, even if you're not using a, a different color. All right, so I scribbled those two because they are meeting at this degree two. And do this for all of the degree twos that you can see. So there's these guys, this one, this one. You'll let, and after doing this, you know, you've already got a lot of stuff in there. You're well on your way. Of course, this is not a circuit yet, but it's, you know, getting there. Now, at this point, what can we do? I have already ex included all the ones that I could based on the information <coughs> from those degree twos. Does anybody see ones that I can now exclude? I want to go through here and try to maybe X out some of these edges which are no longer allowable based on what I've done so far. And I can see a few, yeah? Would it be um, the first swing corner, that bottom one? Here? Yeah, that line. X it out? So you, if you're thinking about avoiding three-way intersections, I like this idea. Although if I were, I don't think it's appropriate to X this one out because for instance, if I did put it in there, that actually doesn't make a three-way intersection. Oh, okay. So you, you're looking for one where if you, if you did put it in, it would in introduce a three-way intersection. Anybody see such a place? <coughs> yeah, how about straight across the top? If I were to put this in here, that would make a three-way right there, which I don't like. So that edge, shall be exited out. All right, anybody see another? I can see a couple others that I could X out. Yeah? The one across the bottom? I actually wasn't gonna say that. If I put the one across the bottom, this does not make a three-way intersection. I'm trying to cross out ones which would make a three-way intersection if I had included them. You got one? The top right. The top right, <coughs> this guy right here. Right? Yeah, I agree. This one right here, if I were to put it in, I hope everybody's clear on what I'm trying to say here. If I were to put this in, it would make a three-way intersection right there. And so that is not allowed. Also, this one is disallowed because it would make a sub-circuit right there, which I also must avoid. So anyway, that edge right there shall be disallowed. So what I'm doing in this step, I X out any which would make a three-way. or sub-circuit, right? I can see one more, I think, that you can X out in this step. And this, you know, if you're not used to doing this, this can be a little tricky. You have to just kind of look very carefully. You could, if you like, go vertex by vertex and see where the three ways could happen. Yeah? Yeah, this one right here also would have made a three way at that intersection if I had used this one here. So this one also, gets the X like that, 
All right. So you X out any, which would make a three-way or a subsurface. And I think that's all you can do in this step. Uh, you have to um, sort of give yourself some time to look carefully and convince yourself that actually there are no more edges here, which would make three-way intersections. OK, so I have excluded all that I can. Now let's look at the picture again with the mind, uh, with, you know, in mind trying to see, are there any now that I must include, all right? And the way the, uh, the ones which you include, remember what I set up here, that would be something like if you see an arrangement like this where some of them have been X'd out and there are only two remaining, then you got to pick those two, all right? So that's what you should be looking for at this point. Are there some places where some of the edges have been X'd out such that there are only two legal ones remaining? You should be looking sort of at the vertices. I'm going to copy this so that I have the step-by-step -step in my notes. I know this is hard to do if you're doing it on paper, but what I'm going to do now, I include any edges where there's a vertex with only two legal options remaining. Does anybody see a uh, place like that? You should be looking sort of at individual vertices and say, like for instance, right here, are there only two um, allowable options left? Uh, no, I would say uh, I mean, I've already chosen this one, so I'm looking for one more choice, but actually I have two, di two different options which are equally valid, and so I, I don't know for sure which one to choose here. Does anybody see a place where you do know for sure? I'm looking for one of the vertices where there's been some X'd out, and so there's only... Um, there's only sort of one option left, and you've got to go for it. Mm -hmm. You should be looking for vertices where something has been X'd out. I'm talking about something like right here. How about this? Right here, you're going to have to choose two edges at this vertex. I already chose this one. I'm not allowed to use this one. That means I definitely must use this one at this vertex right here. You have to choose two edges eventually, and there's only one, uh, one option left as far as which ones to choose. You cannot choose the one going across the top. You must choose this one right here. So in this step, uh, I chose use this one that edge right there all right does anybody see another there's actually another place where I can see a similar situation you should be looking sort of near the X's are there is there a place yeah <coughs> okay right here yeah. yeah so actually this is kind of I was gonna do this in the next step but it's true now that these two are chosen here I should X out those two. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah? <laughs> you seem less sure. But yeah, it's true. Here I have two that are chosen, and that means these two should be, um, should be excluded. Although maybe I'll do that in the next step. Uh, there was one other that I was going to include in this step. Does anybody see another place where there's a vertex where uh, something's been X'd out? Yeah? On the far right. Yeah, the far right. Right here, looking at this vertex, I now see, again, I need to choose two of these three edges, but this one has been X'd out, so I have, I'm gonna have to use that one, all right? This is a little, I don't know, is this, is this a little tricky? So in this step, I chose those two edges to use, and I think actually those are the only ones that I can include at this point. All right, we're getting there. Now we should, again, do uh, try to make some exclusions. It's just about a, you know, you, in each step, I'm going to have to include some. And then after I include those, it makes me exclude some other ones. So uh, I'm going to, I'll copy this and make another step. 
Of course, when you're doing this, you know, on a, on a test or on the homework, I'm not going to expect you to redraw the picture over and over again, although it might be helpful um, if you're using a screen like I am. It's not so hard to do, but... Uh... Okay, anyway, are there any now that we can exclude? Now X out some more, according to the same rules. And what she said already last time was, if I look at this vertex right here, I see there are already two chosen there, which means the other two must be ruled out because they would make three-way intersections if I inserted them. Anybody see any others that I can X out? Yeah? To the right. Um, to the right. This one? Yes. Yes. This one, if I, you were, if I were to include it, it would make a three-way right there. So looking at this vertex to avoid this three-way, I X out that guy. All right. I think maybe these are all the ones we can X out in this step. And now we should look uh, and see if we can include any more. So I'm going to copy this again. We're almost done here. And, you know, at some point you might feel like, can I just like fill in the rest of them any old way? It's not really any old way, but uh, now include. Can anybody see? Again, you are in this, the inclusion step. I'm looking for a vertex in which there have been a bunch X'd out, and so there's only one, uh, one that I can choose. Anybody see such a place? You should be looking perhaps n near the X's. Yeah? Well, did you like on the right, so like the left of the X? This vertex? Yeah. Yes. Looking at this vertex here, I see. Um, Two of them have been X'd out. I need to choose another one, and there's only one option remaining. And so I got to pick that edge here. Yeah, excellent. Uh, is there any other? I think there's one other place like that, and that would be over here. Here I see this. Uh, I have chosen one edge already. This is X'd out, which means I have to pick this one because it's the only, uh, only option remaining. So like so. All right, I think actually there's only one edge left to make it a circuit. It's gotta be this one right here, right? You should not choose, don't choose the one across the bottom because it makes a three way there, but you better choose this one. So I will write that as one final step, but. Uh, the last one fills in right like that. It's a big old H, all right? Finally, done. Now, if you know what you're doing, this will not take that long. Uh, it's only because I was trying to explain every little step, and I was trying to ask you all to provide the, um, the steps. And not all of you were enthusiastically providing your opinions. That's all right. Any, uh, any thoughts about that? I hope that this seems um, reasonable to everybody. I hope that your silence is not a sign that you have no idea what I'm talking about. But. Uh, that's up to you, I suppose. All right, great. Uh, so I got one more example. Oh, sorry, one more thing to say. And that is this same procedure uh, uh, will be used to show that no Hamilton circuit exists. You know, some, some graphs have a Hamilton circuit. Some graphs do not have a Hamilton circuit. And um, if no Hamilton circuit exists, We can use the same tricks to demonstrate that it's impossible. Demonstrate all right. That is, if we do these same uh, tricks about choosing certain edges and Xing out certain edges, so if we do our tricks, but eventually are forced into either a, um, a three-way or a sub-circuit, then that means 
that a Hamilton circuit is impossible. All right. So, for example, here's a simple example, and then I got, I have two simple examples and then one less simple example. But anyway, the way if you, uh, a typical like homework or test question, I would show you a graph and say, either find a Hamilton circuit or show that there is no Hamilton circuit. And the way you show that there is no Hamilton circuit is you do these rules as usual, but you end, you end up showing that somehow this forces you to make a sub-circuit or a three-way intersection, which means it's not possible to make a legitimate Hamilton circuit. So for example, here is a simple one. How about that? Not that, just that, without that extra little guy. All right. <clears throat> what would you do if you, uh, I mean, if you didn't know any better, you would just start the same procedure that we have been doing a few times. And that is, I would begin by looking at the uh, degree twos, which are these corner guys, and then scribble in the edges there, here, 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 and here, right? Those are all of those. But now you can see immediately, I have already finished the circuit, but I missed a vertex, right? I, there's a vertex in the middle that I just straight up didn't cover. So here, uh, I, I will say choosing edges at the degree twos, immediately made a sub-circuit. This actually counts as a sub-circuit because it is by itself a circuit, even though it didn't cover everything up, right? And the sub-circuit rule says that the whole thing that you draw has to be one big circuit that covers every vertex. But this one made a smaller circuit, which missed one of the vertices, all right? So choosing the edges at the degree twos immediately made a sub-circuit, and that means, so no Hamilton circuit is possible. because trying to build one leads to this kind of a, uh, you get stuck. And there's, nothing, there's no avoiding this uh, stuck, stuckness. So no Hamilton circuit in this graph is possible. All right, I got one more example, one more simple one. How about this here? All right, another simple one. This one also, no Hamilton circuit is possible. Can we see why? So in this case, uh, sorry, one extra vertex right there. In the middle of that edge there, all right? Again, in this case, if we start by choose edges at the degree twos, this is how you're always gonna start. So the degree twos are here, here, and actually that, that one in the middle, and then there's some over here. There's a bunch of degree twos. So I'm gonna choose those edges, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, here, here, <coughs> here, here, and here. And what's the problem here? You can see immediately after having chosen these edges of degree twos, I have a three-way right there, and this is not allowed, all right? So we immediately get an illegal three-way intersection. And again, what that means is no legitimate Hamilton circuit exists because you are immediately forced into this unallowable situation. <coughs> So there is no Hamilton circuit, all right? This is how you can use the same rules to demonstrate that there's no Hamilton circuit. Now in these two examples, we sort of immediately found this contradictory situation where it was either a sub-circuit or a three-way. Um, sometimes you have to do several steps, but still eventually you force yourself into a bad situation, and that can happen sometimes too. All right, I have some bigger, more interesting examples, which rather than making you copy them down, I have printed them out. So let's try.
try some of these. I think we'll do one together and then um, we can all try the other ones. One of them is this kind of cute frowny guy. Sometimes I like to make it cute. All right, so let's start on this side. There's there's two sides here. Let's start with this uh, this frowny guy, uh, and I have one of these here also. The frowny guy. Sorry, it's a little small, but I hope you can handle it. Um, this is a graph based on talking to some people on the homework. Some people really don't like graphs with curved lines in them. Don't worry about it. There are, uh, there are curved lines in this graph. It's fine. Um, as usual, any of the intersections or sharp angles represent vertices. So let's try. Uh, I don't know if there's a Hamilton circuit or not, but your job in a problem like this would be either draw a Hamilton circuit or explain uh, or, or show that there isn't one. All right. So either you know we're going to do our usual thing by scribbling in some of the edges. If we're forced into a three-way or sub-circuit, it means the Hamilton circuit is impossible. <coughs> If we're never forced, then we'll just finish and we'll be done. Uh, and there is a Hamilton circuit. So first of all, can we identify any vertices of degree two? Anybody say? There are several. Yeah? Yes, this sort of dot right at the top there, that's a degree two. And then the eyeballs. Yes, those are also degree twos. All right, I think there's a couple more. I literally see a couple more. Yeah? The nose. the nose. Yeah. Great. Yeah, these two are also degree twos. All right. So uh, I am going to choose all the edges which meet the degree twos. For the one on top, that would be this. And then for the eyeballs, it would be these sort of lower guys here, here. And then the nose there, like so. OK, so I have chosen some edges now. Those are all the degree twos. And so these are all the ones that you can choose at this point. Now you should be thinking about, can I exclude some? By the way, I gave you three on the, pa on the paper there. That's just in case you mess it up. You can try again with a different one. Are there any that I can x out at this point? That would be because they would make a three-way intersection or they would make a uh, sub-circuit. This is a little tricky, yeah? The top of the nose. The top of the nose, yeah. Why, why should you exclude that? Because it would make a circuit. Because it would make a sub-circuit, yes. So this <laughs> sometimes can be a little tricky. You just kind of have to look at this for a while and identify. It is true, though, I hope you agree. The top of the nose here, if you included that, would make a sub-circuit down here. So I exit out the top of the nose. The, the bridge, is that what that's called? I don't know. The top of the nose would make a sub-circuit. OK. I think actually that's the only way that you can make a sub-circuit here. Um, all right, does that, having made this x, does this make you uh, want to include any more edges? You should be looking kind of near this x. Are there any uh, vertices at this point where maybe there's like only one possible uh, option and you have to take it? What do you think? For example, if I look at this vertex here. Yeah? Yeah, you got to use this edge at this point. Sorry, I'm so zoomed in, everything's big. It's because right here at this, this one I made green, um, there's only three edges there, but one has been X'd out. It means I must use the other two. So this edge gets chosen. And for the same reason on the other side of the nose, that little one going across, you must use. Again, it's because at this vertex here, there are three edges, but I've already excluded one of them, which means I must use the other two. So here, I scribble like so. All right. All right. 
Let's continue. Given that I in uh, given that I scribbled those in, are there any that I can now exclude because they would make three-way intersections or they would make a uh, subcircuit? Yeah. The top of the glasses. Yeah, the top of the uh, the glasses or the eyes or whatever you call this. <laughs> this one now, if you had included, it would make a three-way right there. So this, you better exclude. All right. I hope everyone's getting sort of a feel for how you go about these things. It may be helpful to really zoom in on a piece of this graph. The fact that I excluded this, uh, it's because that would have made a three-way intersection right there. And then the other side also, this is a completely symmetrical situation on the other side. So this also gets a X. All right. Can we do anything else? Having made this X here, does that uh, lead you to say anything else? I would look at the vertex on the other end of this, this one that I just X'd it out. Can you say anything about this one now? Tapping it. It has two. Yeah, there are now only two legal choices at this vertex here. So you got to take both of those choices. There are now only two allowable edges to use here, so I must use this one and this one, right? And similarly, on the other side, for the same reason, right here, there are now only two allowable <laughs> options, so I must use those two options. So that's like so, and like so, all right? Maybe I'll zoom out. Okay, all right, how are we doing so far? Any thoughts about this? Actually, I, I have thoughts at this point. <coughs> yeah? It's a circuit. It's yeah, a this is a sub-circuit already, right? This whole thing has closed up on itself, and it's not because I, I made it that way, it's because we were forced into this arrangement by the diagram itself. That means, so this, forced a sub-circuit. So your conclusion is there is no Hamilton <laughs> circuit. There is no Hamilton circuit in this graph. All right. It's not a very kind of, it's not really a linear process, right? It's a matter of looking carefully at the edges and deciding certain certain I have to use, certain I don't, uh, I must not use, right? The inclusions and the exclusions. All right. Uh, we got about 10 more minutes. Let's try, I would like for you all to try the other one. So there's one down here and then one on the back. Um, I suppose you can check, uh, try whichever one. Maybe, I don't know if you can do both of those in 10 minutes. So let's all, let's all try and sort of focus on this one and maybe we'll start off next time with the other one. Your job is either build a Hamilton circuit or show that none exists. And you don't have to try and decide ahead of time. You just try to choose whatever edges and see what happens. If you can actually finish and make a real Hamilton circuit, then there is one. If not, then there isn't one. <coughs> Feel free to chat with your friends about it. Maybe we have enough time to do both of them, I don't know.
so you can scribble in more oh, stats if you do too. Okay. So you can do this one and also this one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Doing all right so far? Mm -hmm. Something that happened. So 
So I would, this is this is good. I don't see a flip chip here. But I, yeah, but I do see something like like the this doesn't make a circuit. All right, let's talk about these. I saw most people did get through both of them, or a lot of people at least. Um, so uh, you should start this one by scribbling the degree two vertices, which are here, 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 and then there's ones there, 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 and there, all right? So this is what you begin with, but actually at this point, it, you're kind of already screwed at this point because there's no way to make that into a circuit without um, without introducing a sub-circuit somewhere. And there are many ways that you could argue about why it, it is impossible from here, but you might say something like, uh, you might say something like, looking, say, right in the middle, I have already chosen these two edges, which means I gotta put an X here and an X here, right? Because in the middle, I already chose two edges, and so these other two should not be chosen. But then, if I look at this vertex here, I have already chosen this one, but that's not allowed, so I must also choose this one. And then right there, I made a sub-circuit, which is not allowed. And now, depending on exactly which steps you did, you may have reasoned it out differently from the way that I just did. But in any case, your conclusion here should be, there is no ham. Uh, for that one. All right. The way that I worked it out, I showed that there's a sub-circuit here. Some people also like put put another X here, which means that this path would have just sort of made a dead end. It could never make a circuit. So this is another way that you could have concluded. All right. And can we just real quick try to do the one on the back? I don't think we need to leave it till next time. So you should start again by scribbling in the degree twos, which already gets you pretty far. That's here and here, here and here and here, and here, and here, and here. All right, all of those you begin with. And now I'm going to X out any which would make a three-way or a sub-circuit. So that would be here and here, because those would make three ways with the um, uh, along the left side. So I X those out. Also, this one here would make a three-way on the bottom, so I X that. Also, this one here I X out because that would have made a sub circuit right there and I think those are all the ones that I can X out in my first step but having made those X's look near these X's now at this vertex I have only two legal options so I gotta choose these two and then similarly at this vertex now there is only one more uh, choice and I have to pick that edge so I take this one also I'm starting to feel pretty good about this. All right. <coughs> and now I would like to X out some more. So one thing I can do is this edge right here should get Xed because if I used it, it would make a sub circuit over here, right? And that's not allowed. So I'm gonna X that one. I'm also gonna X this one because that would make a sub circuit right there. Um, and I'm also gonna X that one because this would make a three way right there. There are different ways that you can go about this reasoning, of course. All right, and uh, having x those out, I can fill some more in. For instance, right here, I now only have one remaining legal edge, so I gotta take it. Right here also, I have only one remaining legal edge, so I gotta do it. And, uh, okay, also here, right here, I have only one remaining legal edge, and same goes for here. So I pick this one and this one, and now this is my Hamilton circuit. Ham. Ponyo likes ham. Remember that? All right. This will do it, I think. This is how we do them. You'll have some more practice with those in the homework. We'll do something different next time. See you Friday. Please let me know if you got homework uh, questions for tonight. I would be happy to talk.